Hey, church family, we're here again to continue through the book of Psalms, doing devotionals together. Today, we're looking at Psalm chapter 5. So let's read Psalm chapter 5 together. It says, Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my sighing. Pay attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for I pray to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I plead my case to you and watch expectantly. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil cannot dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who tell lies. The Lord abhors violent and treacherous people. But I enter your house by the abundance of your faithful love. I bow down toward your holy temple in reverential awe of you. Lord, lead me in your righteousness because of my adversaries. Make your way straight before me. For there is nothing reliable in what they say. Destruction is within them. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongues. Punish them, God. Let them fall by their own schemes. Drive them out because of their many crimes, for they rebel against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them shout for joy forever. May you shelter them, and may those who love your name boast about you. For you, Lord, bless the righteous one. You surround him with favor like a shield. What we're going to ask ourselves today after reading Psalm 5 is, how do you view or how do you describe God in your life? The reason I want you to ask yourself that question is kind of based on some of the things we see here, beginning in verse 2, when David says here, pay attention to the sound of my cry, my king and my God. See, he describes God as his king and as his God. So king means that, hey, you're in control. You're the, you're the leader. You're the, you're the supreme final word in my life. See, the king, in those days, the king got to dictate. It's not like how we have a president today and we get to vote and all those things. When there was a king, there was no voting. The king was sovereign. The king decided everything. See, David here is saying that you are my king. You call the shots. You are my leader and my guide. And then he goes on and says, you are my God. Now, it, it may seem funny. He's talking to God and calling him my God. But the reality is, is that we allow sometimes other things to be our gods. We, we fall victim to worship other things and be idolatrous. The nation of Israel struggled with this all the time. They would follow these false gods and goddesses. We see that even in the United States. There's just a plethora of religions and different belief systems. The New Age movement and witchcraft is on an extreme rise in the United States. Um, they're growing leaps and bounds. We even have satanic temples opening in various places. We even have some of our very first satanic after-school programs that are being implemented in some school districts across our country. So those things are on the rise. But here David says, uh, you are my God, which means that he's the one that he turns to. It's the one he worships. That God is the object of his worship. So how does he view God? How is he describing God? That he's his king and that he's his God. That means he's his leader and the object of his worship. And when does he do these things? When does he set aside a specific time to worship? In verse 3, we see in the morning. He says, in the morning you will hear my voice, which means when he wakes up, when David wakes up, the first person he thinks of to talk to is God himself. So how do you view God in your life? Is he of first priorities or is he when you have time or when you get to it? Now, it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to wake up early in the morning and have a four-hour quiet time. But when you get up in the morning, you should acknowledge God in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through prayer, Bible study, it, whatever it may be, acknowledge God to start your day. And then verse 7 and 8, the reason he's saying this is because he's saying, look, I need you. The only reason he can enter God's house is because of the abundance of his faithful love. See, he even says that knowing God here, he says, look, um, I bow down toward your holy temple. And then he says, um, lead me in your righteousness. He needs God's righteousness. He needs God. See, no matter where you find yourself in life, see, David was a king. He was as wealthy as you could get. He was as high status as you could get. He was of utmost importance in his 
culture, and in his society. So no matter where you fall on the spectrum, in culturally speaking, is of great importance or of low importance. Wherever you fall, you need God. See, David is even showing here that even the greatest among us need God. They need the righteousness of God. That's why he views him as his king and as his God, because he understands his need. And then in verse 11 and 12, it ends, it says, Let all who take refuge in, in you rejoice rejoice. See, we've been going through that with the book of Philippians on Sunday mornings, this whole idea of rejoicing. And he's saying here, and he's concluding here, hey, if you're going to glory, glory in the Lord. If you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. If you're going to rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because our Heavenly Father is amazing. He is beyond words. He is holy and highly exalted. And as even though he is holy and highly exalted and amazing and beyond words, he wants to know you. My God and my King has me call him Father. How you view your Heavenly Father will impact how you act, how you respond to life, and how you value him. See, if your Heavenly Father is just a way to get out of hell or just um, someone in the sky that's supposed to give you stuff, you're going to have a low view of Him. Don't have a low view of God. God is not here to be our butlers. He's not here to be at our beck and call. He is far too great for that. We are to be at His beck and call. He is high and lifted up. He is glorious. He is my King. He is my God. So let's rejoice that he loves us and that he shows us grace and mercy and gives us hope and joy. The King of kings and Lord of lords, he loves you. So put him in his place. Make him your king and your God. I hope you have a great afternoon. Look forward to talking with you again on Thursday.